In the next five minutes, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about candle making. All the wicks, the waxes, the oils, every single aspect of making candles from start to finish, every process without leaving out a single detail so that you can make the best candle possible and how you can do all of this in the famous words of Aladdin's genie in an itty bitty living space. Itty bitty living space. Okay, not really. I can barely start to get the wax melting in five minutes, but I can give you a good general foundation and overview of how to make candles in the next few minutes, including some resources to help let you dive in a little bit deeper into this wonderful world of candle making. Hey everyone, my name is Wade. I'm the owner of Black Tie Barn Candle Company. And of course I run this YouTube channel to help others make and sell candles, as well as to see a little bit behind the scenes of my business as well. If that interests you and you would like to see more content like that, then uh, hit subscribe below. That is of course free to be part of this channel. And I would love to have you here in the future. Now, one last important detail before we hit that clock to get started is that I will be leaving you some additional resources in the description below. This will be uh, links to other videos that I have here on the channel that will expand in more detail on some of the topics that I briefly touch on in today's video. So if you wanna learn more, check out those videos. And of course, I will have some other links in the description below for other resources, suppliers, things like that to kind of help you get started. With all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Start that five minute clock. Now, step one, jars and wicks. Deciding on a jar is completely up to you. There are thousands of options. Most your local general retail stores will carry some as well, as of course, candle making suppliers online. Wicks are a topic all on its own, and I have various videos on this channel talking about wicks and testing and so on. But the short answer is, you need a wick for your candle. You can use several methods to stick them to your jar. Most start with wick stickers or high temp hot glue, but again, there are other options. Make sure your wick or wicks are centered, and as a beginner, it will take some time and testing to determine which wick type and what size works best for your candle. But step one is to essentially secure your wick to your jar. Step two, measure and melt your wax. There are a ton of options for waxes and it comes down to personal preference and some experimentation. Different waxes come in different forms, some slabs, some flakes, some blocks. I will have some resources about wax below. Now, how much wax you will need depends on the size of your candle and of course, how many candles you will make. I made a recent video about how to figure that out, which I will also link below. There are a few methods to melt your wax, but most people start with a double boiler method. You place your wax in your pouring pitcher, which sits in a pot of water. You boil that water in the pot, which then of course melts your wax in your pitcher. It's cheap and it works. As you scale, you can move to a Presto pot to melt your wax, then you progress to larger melting tanks such as this. Before we move on to step three, depending on the wax you're using, the temperatures that you will use for the rest of these steps will vary and it will depend on your specific material. So I'm not gonna mention specific temperatures or temperature ranges in the next several steps, but just know that it depends on your wax and your situation. Now step three is sort of optional. If you want your candles to be colored, this is a great time to add your candle dye. Now notice I said candle dye, not food coloring, not soap dye, not crayons. Candle dye specifically made for candle making. If you plan to keep your candles natural colored, which I would suggest starting out, then you can skip this step entirely. Step four, everyone's favorite part, is time to make your candles smell good. Choosing fragrance oils is a lot of fun, but be careful because it's also very addicting. Before you know it, you will have bookshelves full of oils you have bought but haven't used. Start with samples like one ounce bottles. Once you're ready to commit, you can buy larger ones. Fragrance oils range in prices, but can get quite expensive, so take your time. Add the appropriate amount of fragrance oil to your melted wax. Be sure you're using fragrance oils made for candle making, just as you did with the candle dye. The amount will vary based on your wax type and the amount of candles you are making, of course, so it's best to work in percentages. That is too much to talk about in this video, but again, that same video I mentioned earlier about how to figure out how much wax to use uh, to make however many candles you plan to use, that same video also talks about fragrance load percentages and how to figure all of this out. It sounds complicated, but there's really a simple formula to help you follow, and that video highlights all of that. I will definitely have that linked in the video description below and probably at the end of this video as well. As a general rule, most waxes can hold anywhere from one to one and a half ounces of fragrance oil to one pound or 16 ounces of wax. Now that's a very general statement and there are certainly many exceptions, but that's a good average. After you have added your fragrance oil, mix well with a spatula or a spoon or whatever makes sense, just be sure it's relatively easy to clean or it's disposable, like a wooden skewer, for example. Stir slowly, but thoroughly. You really wanna make sure your fragrance oils are fully blended and incorporated into your melted wax. Step five is pouring your fragrance wax blended combination 
into your jars. Do this slowly to avoid splashing and too many bubbles. Now, as a reminder, the temperature at which you will pour, just like the other temperatures we've discussed so far, will depend and vary based on the wax you're using. Step six, use something to help keep your wicks centered while your candle cools. Starting out, you can use a clothespin or a chip bag clip or a popsicle stick with a hole in the middle. Really, there are many things that will work. Anything really to help keep your wick from moving around. As you settle in, there are many wick clips and wick holders sold by suppliers specifically meant for candle making, like these here, but that can wait. Step seven, let your candles cool for the next 24 to 48 hours just to be safe. Once cooled, you can trim your wicks with a dedicated wick trimmer or simply a pair of scissors, nail clips, etc. You want to trim to about a quarter inch above the wax. Step eight. Well, at this point, with many waxes, you are ready to light your candle and enjoy what you've made. Now, some waxes do take a little bit longer to develop the scent. And most of the time, the waxes you buy or the suppliers that you purchase your wax from will provide some basic instructions or some general guidelines on how to use that material. At this point, you've now made a candle or several candles, which is awesome. That's something you've made, it's yours, and no one can take that from you, except for maybe your wife or your mother. They will both certainly take them from you. So watch your back and stop the clock. Whew, we made it. A high level crash course, general overview about candle making in a nutshell. But seriously, making something all on your own is a great feeling and it may kickstart you into a new hobby that you just absolutely love to do. In fact, countless people have taken it a step further and eventually even turned it into a business. If you are interested in any more details about candle making or candle business for that matter, I would encourage you to check out the other videos here on the channel. I have a ton of videos covering a lot of different topics related to both candle making and candle business. So definitely check those out as well as check out the description below. I will have several links and resources to help you out. Before you go, I think the most appropriate next step would be for you to see a little bit more detailed step-by-step -step walkthrough of how to make a couple batches of candles. So this was a general overview. This next video that I'm gonna show you right here, if you wanna check it out if you haven't already, actually takes you through the process a little bit more detailed in a step-by-step -step manner. Again, you can check out this video right here, as well as another video that I mentioned earlier about how to figure out the formulas and percentages and, and how to come up with the right amount of materials to make your candles. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you give this video a like by hitting the thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe so that I can see you all next time. Oh, and don't forget, you can do all of this in an itty bitty living space.